On today's episode of What's Up FGO, the summer banners have continued as predicted. Also, it's time to go back to school, and you're going to learn a little something about that little special surprise that NA had in store for you. Had to do that tongue click very loudly to make sure it registered. Anyway, hello. Welcome to Let's Take FGO. I am one of your hosts, Crack Dealer Omega. With me, as always, Book Aficionado. Lucky. Also, I would like to state for the record, when I'm talking about crack, I'm talking about plastic crack. I'm that guy selling you bootleg gunpla out of his van down by the river. Obviously. What was I thought you were talking... I was thinking the tabletop RPG crack. No, that's in real life, not on the show. Ah. Anyway, I hope everyone is enjoying Fake Grand Order, a.k.a. someone's going through their Lincoln Park phase. And while we here at Studio Manga like to bring you the latest in FGO-related news and memes, we will be talking about current event, future events for both the JP and Ian versions of the game. So anyone not want to spoil it should look for this very nice summer edition. Don't you believe in fairies? But yes, got a wonderful show for you today. Should be a fun time. We've got news. We've got memes. We've got three heckin' chumpers of pro tips. But first, I'd like to remind you this episode is brought to you by our patrons like... Adam Harp, Blacklist OG, Call Me Zed, Carlos Dragon, Ferris, Face Ice Bird, Jimmy Vasquez, GDV, 9000, Just the Fay, Jonathan Seville, Chris Starley, Legendary Boss Hunter, Liam Kessler, Regent Raptor, Rise of Kenji, Rogue Robin, Charvor, Sean Pryor, Some Guy Named Bob, and Varian the Crow. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it really helps us out. Thank you for your support, everybody. Thank you. All right. And with a Musashi NP queued up and. Our viewers like you phase out of the way. We will proceed with the show. It means it's time to check in with everybody's favorite Kohai. Senpai! Senpai! Ohkite kudasai! Because! At a crisp two minutes and 20 ish seconds. It's time for Wake the Fuck Up, Senpai, Wake the Fuck Up, Bro Tips! Okay, I have multiples of these. I know, they've been kind of lax lately, but now there's stuff happening. So, number one, spoilers for later, but remember. You have 30 days-ish, more like 27, technically, from today, something like that. Anyway, you have 30-ish days to go to the start-gssr if you're already playing the game. If, you, if you're not starting new, uh, which, hi, hello, if you've decided to start FGO new, uh, while I cannot necessarily recommend this episode exactly, we've been doing this show for basically as long as FGO NA has been coming out, so we've got a huge backlog you can catch up on. Anyway. That's just, you know, good news to remember. If you, you uh, don't want to fire it right away, or can't fire it right away, you know, just chill and wait, and you got 30 days-ish. Next up, number dos. If you're not already caught up on LB6, you are running out of time on your Leyline Stones to catch up if you want to make use of them. Because uh, uh, there are a few people on our Discord who are uh, not quite caught up yet working on it. And I believe you've got, like, 10 days left on those-ish. Uh, date's obviously not exact, because, you know, we're recording this one day, it'll be released a different day. Technically, server reset may happen in the middle of the show, depending. I kind of hope not, and don't think so, because that would mean we'd be going until midnight, which is like three hours from now. But you know what I mean, chat. You have slightly more than a week left with your Leyline Stones, if you want to actually make use of them to clear main story. Also, if you're not caught up, you know, period, let alone if you were not caught up on LB6, in general, Stones. Also, also, week, huh? what's up? No, I'm just feeling that this, when these ex stones expire, is going to line up to a date or something. It's possible. I don't remember if they did that in JP, but they usually they end up at a certain point or you get an extension. Uh, and I don't think we've got any extensions in the pocket. I also think we've moved through all of their planned phases of the story clear campaign. Yeah. But the third one, also, also, I say this a lot, but it is a good reminder. Remember, hunting quests are event support. Some of you have not fixed your event support since NeuroFest ended. So, you know, keep them in mind if you want to get that sweet, sweet FP. But that is the end of our pro tips. Next up, regular of the throne, our regular Cheap and Tapic. Tapic. Got some leftover lotto news since that wrapped up, but, uh, me, yes, I've got something. Decided to use all those EXPs the lotto was just dumping on us, and uh, I've grailed Summer Musashi and Castoria to 100. I wanted the extra nice. stats. Also, they are, like, literally right now, like, my most frequently used units. I think both of them are, like, bond like eight, you know. Wow. We're trucking. Also, if you want to know my total score, got 36 boxes. Actually, it might have been 37. I'm not sure. It's somewhere over 35. Uh, roll 100 at a time is amazing. It is. Uh, for me, actually, I did not write, actually write down my lot of boxes. I should check that real quick. But I got a little bit more than that to talk about. So 
All right, I'm going to level with you all. Please bear with me. I am not entirely sure who or what I exactly leveled, but, 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 I will let you all know that I have no longer have any servants below three stars left to level. No silvers and bronzes. I leveled them all. Also, I have leveled everyone that I got from before 12 1 uh, 2018. Yes, I know. You go, lucky. That was like like six years ago. And I'm like, yes! I'm still very proud of this fact. Because in total, that means I only have 23 servants left to level. I remember when the number was like twice this, not too long ago. Also, to be fair, that's every single launch unit and then most of the units that came out on that front half of year one, which was a decent amount. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just listening to Nero sing in the shop about that, that the event's over. <laughs> yeah, some people have commented on that one. It's uh, it's a funny. Check it out if you haven't checked. It's a good. Anyway, I have just double checked. I have done 70 boxes. So, a both solid effort. Res- both very respectable for us. Yes. Like I said, I probably could have done more. Like I said, I have unleashed the evil that is Fate Grand Automata. But I do want to save, I did want to save Apples for a hunting quest and for the summer event, which has its own little mechanic that might require a lot of AP. Yeah, I should probably, I probably sh- should still set up FGA sometime, but I recently had to switch to a, uh, a backup phone, uh, which is not as not as fierce in the battery department. It uh, mm. runs down a little a little faster, and uh, I switched like literally just before Lotto started, so I, I did not want to go fucking around with stuff just yet. We still have a Christmas Lotto though, right? Uh, this year, champ. I believe so. I'll keep it in mind. I mean, yes, Axe, but then I have to do that thing where I'm fucking switching the game back and forth. I I actually prefer FGO on my phone because it runs on my phone well, and I can you know. I can double task, such as right now. I can uh, record this show and also uh, smash buttons. And smashing okay. buttons is important. That's right. The Christmas Lotto is the Martha one. <laughs> and you all should know, Lucky, I did not hesitate on the B2S GSSR. I guess I pulled a Clio. Woo. MP2. I guess. So let's go all the way over to not tell the world's evil, but damn close. Guys, Cleo was the second from the bottom of my desire list for B2 as GSSR. Just saying. I can tell you, I'm pretty sure everyone can guess what was at the top. I'm going to tell you anyway, it was Summer Tomomo. I was hype. I was thrilled. I was excited. I was disappointed. Much laying on the floor going, why? Yeah, this is, uh, you, you may notice that my results are not in here anywhere, uh, because I haven't rolled. Um, because right now I'm, I'm grappling with a similar situation because, uh, Fun, fun fact, Lucky and I both have the bottom list of a desired servant, the number the number one at the bottom, you know, whatever the, the actual number is of servants. Um, I don't know if I want to spend $12 to get NP4 MHX. I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. Um, there's other stuff in there. I could get some new stuff. We'll talk about that when we actually discuss what's, what's all in there, but that would, that would be kind of a bummer, and I'm not sure I'm ready for that one just yet, but we do have 30 days. He was bummed. Honestly, I would I would take the Clio, but that's that's because uh, unlike you, I've I've never had great luck with uh, with uh, limited SSR assassins or AOE assassins in general. Uh, Koyan Sky is like my first one, and even then, she hardly ever gets to use her NP. Though sometimes she does. I enjoy sticking my bright pink Metal Gear on somebody. <laughs> Can you could could you color code the Metal Gear Zeke in in Peace Walker? I don't remember. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. If you can, I mean, it's it's you know, it's mostly for AI stuff. You don't actually get to use it, but uh, if you could, you should remember that. If we for when we do a, a Metal Gear retrospective, we gotta we gotta make the the Zeke hot pink. <laughs> we all know Metal Gear Metal Gear Zeke, Zeke plays J-pop, so you know. But all right, okay, that's records. That's evils. You're all caught up on that now, chat. Everybody's having a good time. Let's talk about. Did you finish your master missions? Do you finish my army house? Probably. They're very simple. It's almost like they're tuned to match up with, you know, end of lotto, start of hunting quest. You need to get two skill gem or statue drops, and then get four skill gem or statue drops. Defeat 15 enemies with the human attribute. That's not the human trait, the human attribute. Uh, Then defeat 15 archers or casters, not servants or bosses, and this will be true for all of the next two I'm about to list as well. And then defeat 15 saber or rider enemies, and defeat 15 lancer, assassin, or berserker enemies. So, uh, FGO says, you better be doing hunting quests. You can also do other stuff. There's, uh, I think it's Happy PL dailies as well, so, you know. Whatever floats your boat, just do something, okay? Boat. Log in, do your dailies. <coughs> Sorry, slight scratchy throat all of a sudden. It's been a little dry here lately. 
All right, so I'll take a big sipple of water. A sipple. And then we're going to move into the skelegrams. So, we've got some news for you. Uh, I believe this was uh, was brought to us through a lovely dev diary. But we know about the back-to-school campaign for 2023. Started the 15th, technically goes until the 31st of October. Uh, now, not all of these do, though, but some of these are open-ended for a while. Uh, first of all, log in multiple times, a maximum of, I believe, five times until 828 to get up to 20 St. Quartzes. Your friend slots have permanently increased by three. There are back-to-school limited master missions, which include making new friends and getting new follows. So, you know, keep that in mind. That gives statues and stuff. And also, we've got uh, double FP, half AP dailies and all dailies open, and double suck chance until the 21st of August, giving you some, uh, some you know, last-minute grindy chance. We've also got a renewed Start Dash campaign, double Start Dash rewards during this time period, and a returning Master campaign if you've been away for a little bit. This also includes, as we alluded to earlier, the brand new Start Dash GSSR, unlocked for Back to School campaign. For a mere 12 paid St. Quartz, which is about $12, not counting taxes, you can get a servant. Uh, I believe it's a full 11 pull with a guaranteed servant from a list. This is available for 30 days after you clear Fuyuki Section 3. So every new master in FGO will get access to this, but only for 30 days after you clear Fuyuki 3. You know, the normal starting prologue stuff. And obviously, you know, for the rest of us who are already past that point, it's 30 days from when the campaign started. You can only do this once. And your servant selections include Nero Bride, Okita, Saber Shiki, Summer Artoria, Gilgamesh, Ishtar, Brynhildr, Skahach, Summer Tamamo, Iskender, Ilya, Davinki, Merlin, Cleopatra, MHX, Shuten, Raiko, Kentoki, Amakusa, Dantes, and Jaltair. Uh, basically, almost everybody in the uh, year one list. I believe what they said was they said is it's every limited summer up to the up to Solomon. Yes, because technically uh, Merlin was like Solomon pre-release, so Gramps is not in here. But yeah, unless I like somehow missed him in my block, but I thought there was only those those assassins. Yeah, no, Gramps came out the uh, the January after. Yeah, he was uh, not in New Year's itself, but like around then. Yeah, he was just like middle of the month. I just remember, remember that it was so weird. Yeah, it was celebrating the uh, the the end of uh, Solomon. Yeah, your 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 three assassin choices are Cleopatra, MHX, and Shooting. So yeah, there you go. Just a fun little permanent extra SSR everybody can do uh, for even slightly less than normal GSSR paid Saquas. So you know, a, a decent investment for new players, obviously. For some of you, you may be looking at this and be like, "Oh, I've got all of those." Though, of course, you might get, you know, coins, extra NP levels, etc. Might be worth it still, but just keep it in mind. There's also, because uh, this back-to-school campaign is a replacement for the fact that two years ago in JP, there was a Prisma movie that released and also got a campaign. There's an Ilya sub uh Testament costume has been added to dressmaking, and there are brand new rank-ups for Ilya and Miu. So, you know, catching you up on some stuff, slamming some stuff together. Also, as part of this, but... Technically separate. We've got Hunting Quest number 11, going from the 15th until the 21st. Daily limited mission for apples. Just do one Hunting Quest a day for that day, and you get an extra apple. It started with silvers and has moved on to golds. <laughs> and the quests were slash are bones, crystals, shells, talons slash void dust. You are here currently, as of this being recorded. Stakes slash pomegranates and mirrors slash fangs. Yes, it says there's only six of these. Uh, but yeah, so a uh, wide variety of these going on. Some in-demand material, as always. Bone's very important. Shell's very important. Dust is a big deal for some people. Um, Dragon fangs can be pretty intense, and mirrors are weird. Stakes, obviously, very big. big. So all of these will be a uh, a great addition. Uh, and include, you know, new Pride Plus nodes, a.k.a. the new 90 Plus Go Fuck Yourself node. Uh, for the Stakes one, which is upcoming, this no that node is 211. <laughs> so enjoy that. And all the enemies, I believe, are writers. Not even sure. Do I try some Kentucky face card nonsense there? I might. I'll figure it out later. Obviously, the drops are best on the uh, the Pride Plus node, but uh, the regular Pride node is, should be 333 if you, you know, need more conventional farming. But yes, that's a good time. Good for EXPs, good for mats, got some other stuff in there. Um, this was also, I believe, was a lead up to the little Prisma release banner in JP, so you can randomly find magical sticks 
they give you uh, extra QP drops and some Aurora steals. So keep all that in mind. But in JP, Servant Summer Fez 2023 is not over yet. Banner 3, as not even predicted, I, that's what I wrote in my notes, but uh, Banner 3, as called out explicitly, Ruler Melusine, Archer Bargast, and Pretender, definitely not Baba, plus both CE sets, going from the 15th until the 1st of September. And Banner 4 did happen. Banner 4 was predicted. There was enough wiggle room. It did happen. It's Tez. Tez Galiboka. From the 17th of August to the 1st of September. So a little extra action there. Um, does definitely seem like uh, JP Lasangle is trying even harder to make sure we get, you know, regular banner rotations where it makes sense. Right? Right. So like, you know, Tez was technically at the start of this year, but they've made sure to squeak him in for an extra one about six months later. It's pretty nice. Seven-ish months. And uh, he is heavily featured on the uh, five-star CE on the male side this year, so it's nice. I don't think he's getting a costume this year for reasons, but maybe next year they'll set it up. And I have seen many a meme about his uh, appearance in the CE, by the way, because it's like the the, the sluttiest wetsuit he could be wearing. <laughs> uh, I love the fan art of trying to figure out what his tan lines would look like, because it's very silly. But we've also got some extra news. Uh, Nocturia is now available as the welfare. Welfare foreigner, so they've gotten through that far. And as everybody predicted, literally everybody and their mother, there is indeed a second Oberon costume. Uh, generally, people agree on that this is either his emo phase or he looks like he's trying to sell you drugs, both of which <laughs> are appropriate for this summer. Also, people are suspecting there may be yet another double secret hidden costume at the very end of the event, because not all the story is out yet, as far as I can tell. Um, so may maybe a little extra spice in there. We'll see. I won't reveal uh, who or what if you don't know on the internet, but you can keep a keep a lookout. Also, in general, you know, been seeing a little bit of the sideshow from this event. Obviously, you know, not going deep into spoilers because JP and other stuff and, you know, waiting on translations. But in general, this event seems like a banger. Uh, there's quite a lot of, of story stuff going on. Uh, obviously, uh, Kidoku Nasu himself is writing this. So, yes, there will be a giant woman involved. There are multiple giant women involved. What are you talking about? Also true, technically. Um, but, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, in the story, seems like there's a lot of little sprites and expressions that are that are cute. Got some back and forth there, and uh, you know some some cameos from all of your characters. So you know we're we're in there. It's pretty solid. Looks like a good event. Thumbs up for two years in the future. Fortunately, we don't have a great line on our own summer just yet, but hopefully we'll see that pre-release soon. Honestly, it may get pre-release. The pre-release might show up sooner than we think. I have a feeling. Yeah, we'll see what's up. I have not pre-gamed, though, because the pre-release is supposed to last about a week, and it hasn't shown up yet, so should hopefully get enough wiggle room for next show, at least. It might be it might be tight if there ends up being, like, a like a Saturday or Sunday release of the of the summer event, and we only record on the Friday, but we'll, we'll figure it out. This is the power of mostly radio silence. <laughs> but yeah, so, the GSSR was the thing they couldn't, they didn't want to talk about yet. It's cool. It's neato. It's quite neato, as we say. All right, but let me take a quick drink. Because are we done with the news? Yep, that's it. We're done. The bottom of our news. We're done with the news. So with that, let us switch on over to this week's Let's Talk FGO Mailbag, the segment where we read what you have to say and comment accordingly. This week we have eight, because I messed up. This was actually supposed to get posted like either uh, this morning or yesterday, but I have been battling an evil most foul the uh, U.S. Uh, Postal Service, they're not actually that bad, but sometimes they can be a pain in the fucking dick. Government work is like that. Also, have you done your traditional refresh? Let me do my traditional refresh. I'll do my traditional refresh. Refresh! I We upgraded. Nine. You can thank me later, ninth person. <laughs> but yeah, no. It was just, um, I got a package. Uh, for those who um also ordered uh, BCNY's, um... Raiko and or um, shooting shirts. Uh, that's what I. That's that's what's waiting for me at the post office. I'm just like, how dare you? I could have gone into work representing Mama Raiko. Ah, I am incensed and flabbergasted, and I want to use another word, but I can't think of it at the moment. But so we're just gonna move on. Let's get started with the mailbag. This first one comes from the Tyrant King, who is the future and current owner of Melisine Jet Dragon. And a, uh, apparently a minion of a Lucky's Vile Foe now. <laughs> oh, you work for the Postal Service? Question! Hey guys, now with Oops All LB6 uh, Summer fully released, what is your favorite NP animation out of all of them? 
Also, now with Sam and I Remnant, about a month away, will you stream it when it comes out or play it in your own time? Anyway, that's it for me. Sending good vibes your way. Wah, 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 wah. Um, and hope you have a great evening. P.S. Thank you, Chaco, for citing in those extra Melisine expressions. Melon for Vargas Ascensions. Yes, bless. Honestly, like, we're, like talk about in general, all of the Fairy Knights are amazing. Vargas is near and dear to my heart, as I am pretty sure everyone has noticed for reasons, obvious ones. But besides the point, um, I love I love the work on all of them. Great. I my wallet's dead in two years, y'all. It's dead. Yeah, a lot of a lot of work was done into like all the different ascension works for everybody. A lot a lot of extra stuff here. Obviously, like that's usually how summer goes. Like uh, I I think our first couple summers were a little more tame, but oh yeah. In general, like when when you know uh. Tight Moon or Lysengle hands in the request to the artist to draw the swimsuit version. I think most FGO artists are just like, all right, you hold up, let power. me cook. I got some I shit I can't hold up anymore. Because, like, that, that's... FGO already has a pretty zany art style, you know, they're, despite being about, like, historical and pop culture characters, they aren't usually held back by realism at all. Nope. Uh, so... But but usually there are some, like, consistent design elements or, you know, similarities. Like, obviously, like, uh, for instance... Vargas first ascension as Tamlin Gawain is supposed to be inspired by regular ass Gawain, so you know it is kind of similar. But uh, with these, it's just like nah, fucking whatever, go crazy. Nasu, you know, has a couple of notes and, and comes back. So what you got? Good. <laughs> and it's great. Yeah, all all the the NP animations are really good as well. And we're talking about NPs. I do like Vargas and fucking <laughs> uh, Baba and Cheese is amazing. I've seen so many memes about it. But I have to do a shout out to fucking Melisines just doing the fucking takeoff with Nemo on the fucking on the strip. Ugh. Yeah, no, like like that's that's really good with the front facing sprite and like all the other shit. Yeah, I, I, we hit the animation team hit on all cylinders, you know. Yeah, no, but like I said, it's a special place because like when I was in the navy, I served on an amphib, which ain't a full ass carrier, but we still had a fucking strip. So when I was on forward lookout. Which is, I think, probably my was was my favorite lookouts. I could just see the jets taking off and landing all the time. It was great. I love that so much. Ugh. So with that though, let us move on. This next one comes from the janitor cleaning up apple cores off the floor after the farm. What do you mean after the farm? The farm continues. The farming is going to at least continue until fucking uh, our summer's over. People are going to be going nuts. The farming will continue until mats improve. I actually want a shirt. But they say. Hey, Lucky Omega, hope things are going well this past week. My question this week is, do you prefer when servants are released with interesting gimmicky kicks or prefer a more reliable but previously done kicks in new hot summer vibes as I continue to bake outside in the heat? Please hydrate responsibly. Lucky was down for three days with heat exhaustion because he's a dumbass and worked outside very hard without drinking enough water. Oh, was that what got you? Yeah. Mm, yeah, heat frustration, no joke, everybody. No, I just went, like, super extra hard in the morning things. I just wasn't drinking enough water, so that's what gave me my headache and my fucking fever. I'm gonna have to watch out for that myself. Uh, yeah. My father is currently uh, working, you know, uh, like, disaster response in uh, Hawaii, so uh, I have to mow the lawn, and it's been raining a lot. But as per your question here, I, I don't know. Honestly, like, I'm either or, or, or I like seeing new mechanics and seeing new things done, but Sometimes you just want, you don't want to necessarily think too hard with a gimmick and just do the thing. Yeah, As, like, like... Like, our uh, summer uh, summer students are coming out with some wild shit uh, this summer. And while it's very cool to see, I'm looking at it and I'm just like, what is happening? Also, thank you to everyone who actually did just pop out in the last episode and just be like, I understand how this works. That's like, you are smarter than me. Yeah, we had some people actually like trying to break down the Chloe system. And some other stuff in the in the comments. Though I do but, feel vindicated by at least one person who was talking about like, oh, I understand how doing the the like casku loop works. I just don't. I'm not happy about it. Your scene, brother. But yeah, I'm I'm thinking like, on the one hand, like when you get something truly unique and new to FGO, right? Which we have several. We'll be talking about uh, some more units down down below the the break, right? Um. That's cool, because that, like, unlocks entirely different things you couldn't do before, you know? Uh, for an example, slight spoilers, but one of uh, Summer Babo's skills increases the timer on timed buffs. Yep. 
Uh, she extends the duration of enemies' dots and uh, extends the duration of your friendly units' uh, recovery type stuff. So, you know, HP regen, NP regen, star gen stuff, right? And I'm like, whoa, I don't think we've ever done that before. That's really cool. Uh, that means that, you know, she can do uh, entirely unheard of things in certain team comps now. But since she's the only servant who does that right now, as far as I can recall, uh, it does also mean that, like, if you want to do stuff like that, you have to figure out where she, as, you know, a four-star pretender, fits into your matchups. Which is not not always easy. Sometimes you're going to get, you know, class resistance and, and bad matchups and shit. So there, there's definitely something to be said for just looking at a servant and going, Ah, yes, you have a simple-to-understand kit. What you do is just push that big blue button very hard and move on. Got it? Okay, thumbs up. I understand. So I, 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 I guess, like, in terms of actively using them, I prefer less gimmicky kits because I actually get to use them without braining too hard. But I love when FGO does new mechanics in general. I guess I just, you know, hope the, that they include multiple servants who do some of, some of these effects overall, I guess, you know, so you can do more with more options. With that, let us move on. The next one comes from Abuki's Bartender. They say, hello, Luggy Omega. Hope this was a good farming week for everyone with Hunting Quest 11 in A. Quick question for you. Has there ever been a servant you rolled for based on who their artist and not for gameplay or story reasons because uh, came around to like, uh, came, but came around to liking after getting them? For me, it was Abuka, Buki, right? Rolled for Raita and stayed for... Drunk big sister, snick wife, sending good vibes. Wah 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 wah, and have a pleasant day. I mean, I do believe I am kind of in the same boat. Like, if I see Raita, I am probably just going to roll just because I do love that man's work. Uh, probably same for you know the other big artists like Wada Arco. Um, if Melon does another servant, I am just fucking rolling for that one too. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, I I feel like for obviously we have the power of clairvoyance, but like yeah. I was definitely, like, interested in Vargas the most out of the Tam Lin because I was like, oh, hey, Melon, I recognize that guy from Twitter. He trusts, you know, fan art and stuff. And stuff. <coughs> he has some original IP stuff he's cooking. Yeah. But yeah, so I was like, oh, neato. Um, so obviously, but technically, you know, I, I'm pretty sure we were getting started to be introduced to some of those characters, like, as the, the rolling opportunity opened up anyway. So, you know, it, it's it's not quite a one for one. Yeah. And definitely the thing about, like, I honestly, I do, like, I, I can't really say it's necessarily, you know, I came to love them later. Like, I saw Abuki's design. I was like, oh, my God, I love this. So I can't necessarily say that I came to love them. If we're talking about ones that are just that, I, I, unfortunately, I don't think I could name one, unfortunately. Sorry. Uh, let me see here. One moment. All righty. Does this one come from someone who slept in joy because morning was much chillier than the night? Oh, that's a fucking mood. I cannot wait for colder nights and days. I just kind of like to stop, you know, sweating through the night. But they say, hey, uh, Lucky Omega, my question for both of you today is, on hot summer days that are not too hot to go outside, what drinks do you enjoy getting to cool off? Thank you for your videos. As always, remember to scrutinize weather forecasts. Yeah, you gotta be careful about those. Uh, for me, Lucky is a big lemonade stand. I like a nice cold glass of lemonade when I'm sitting outside reading my lot novels. I think that's usually my big one. Like I said, I'm trying to cut soda. I just, like I'm not a, like I'm not as big a soda drinker as I used to be. Like, give it like a month though, it's gonna change because we're gonna be in fall. Then I switch over to cider. Uh, but yeah, no lemonade, specifically pink lemonade or raspberry lemonade. I love raspberry lemonade. I have in my time been a big drinker of the Kool Aid. You know, f just general flavored soft drink. Uh, these days, actually, it's shocking, I know, especially if uh, people have probably heard me in past years even. But uh, honestly, water. I like, agree. I'll take, I'll take a nice flavored water if we got it. Um, I drink a lot of uh, Gatorade's Propel waters because they have, you know, extra stuff to replace electrolytes and shit you lose when you sweat. Happens a lot around here. But yeah, no, uh, literally just then I took a, a bottle of just regular ass water filtered through my refrigerator spout. Uh, I used to drink a lot of bottled water, but that uh, involves a lot of uh, waste. And also, sometimes people can be expensive. Expensive. So yeah, water. I usually drink soda, like, only with meals. Alright. So, let us move on. This next one comes from Monster Girl Aficionado. High five! Dear Lucky Omega, what moments have you had in a video game, FGO or otherwise, that just left you slack-jawed? 
I asked because I just had one of the most anime moments I have ever experienced in a video game. N14. Yep. Thanks and keep up the great work. Y'all are one of the highlights of my week. Uh, P.S. Let Expanse contract Aeon become instant. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. This person has reached the end of Shadowbringers MSQ. Uh, it's so good. It's so good. And it is so anime. Well, I hope it, you know. Uh, if if it leaves me slack jawed, you'll be able to see it if you so choose, because I'll be streaming it. <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna pick a cheap answer. Yes, Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. Yeah, that's that's already <laughs> been a point of discussion, I believe, in the process. <laughs> yeah, no, um, yeah, just just keep going. The uh the final bit of the MSQ there, mm, amazing. Just the, the entire last zone, just the last dungeon and the last trial is just like ah, it's just a roller coaster of emotion. And this it's also the reason why we're going on summer vacation. Uh, uh, but otherwise, mm, let's see. I'm trying to think of anything that I've played recently that I can. Yeah, I'm fall thinking. Back on. I'm thinking. Big whammies. Obviously, Lost World Six was was crazy. Um, you know, I was there's there's quite a lot of 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 boss fights in Final Fantasy 16 where I was you know standing up, walking around, fist pumping. I still think my favorite. I think the one that I think did it for me the most was actually probably uh, Titan Lost. That was not a scale I was expecting. Um, I still think that's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, the final boss fight's really good for stuff, but I think I think the one that to me the most just just like wait, you mean there's more game after this? Was Bob? <laughs> like, I I don't understand. We went to space. What will you do from here? Go beyond space. Yeah, kind of. You know, you, you kind of did. You went beyond space into, like, you went to the mental scape, I guess. I don't know. I don't even know what you call that. We do, we do a lot of stuff, okay? We do a lot of stuff. Uh, Remember, this is, the, this is the same team that brought you Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, no, Tears of the Kingdom didn't necessarily leave me slack, John. It, it gave me feels, but... Um, let me look at my wall here. What have I picked up recently? No, unfortunately, I don't have anything necessarily off the top of my head. Wait, no, you know, I will say Resident Evil 4 left me slack jaw. They did a lot of good work with that game, and just how they changed up some of the fights, fights was just like, whoa! Yeah, remakes are good this year. Yeah, personally, I don't know about Baldur's Gate 3. Like, I don't slack know. Slack jaw doesn't start... seem like that's the, the, the best word for that game. Like, it's, a, it's I haven't played it yet, but people people are saying it's really good. You know, a lot of people are saying it's their game of the year and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm inclined to agree. But like it's that doesn't seem like it's a slack jaw type game. That's that's you know that's a deep sea RPG. That's more just like you know experiencing the moment. Um, I mean, I think also it's this is a few years ago now, obviously. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, cues for the future. Uh, Final Fantasy VII remake really did a lot. Um, yeah, no, a lot that's... of stuff that has stuck with me for for these years until Rebirth, right? And I suspect Rebirth will give me some new zingers. Like, um. I still, and it's still in my rotation on YouTube Music. They still throw this at me, but the the fucking hit on the Airbuster theme, and then you do the Airbuster fight. Which, by the way, in the original Final Fantasy VII, that was a nothing boss fight. That guy sucks. Um, and they turned him into a into a you know like four stage epic giant mecha battle with fucking Heidegger heckling you the whole time. Uh, to uh, the most heavy guitar rendition of the boss theme they've done so far, and I'm just like, damn. Damn, are they gonna do two more of these? So yeah, that's that's definitely like the, the game out of my my cluster that is that has hit me the most in a, in a long while. I think it's just stuck with me for these past few years. Yeah. Uh, let's We're see. halfway there. Whoa, living on a prayer. I gotta be careful. I'm I'm developing a sudden scratchy throat as we're sitting here. <laughs> Can't go too ham. Can't go too ham. A little ham is okay. It's always good to go a little ham. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. We move on. This next one comes from Agent Four One Eight, who says, "Hello, Lucky Omega. With all the recent investment NA is getting from Lasagna, are there other things you wish to see, like maybe another FGO USA?" Uh, have a great weekend, y'all. Uh, P.S. Do you believe that Sony is pushing for this investment in NA, or is the teams pushing for that investment now that they have the backing of a global company for this change? Um, I'm gonna answer your second part first. It's both. It's yeah, I was definitely say, both. It's probably column A, column B. Yeah. Sony is a big multinational corporation that has done a really good job of like both maintaining their strong business ties in Japan, as obviously seen with uh, recently Final Fantasy 16 being you know timed to Kuzum on PS5, um, 
but also, you know, over here in the West with a lot of their, their Western facing stuff. Uh, but also it does genuinely seem like, like being split into your own company that is basically just doing FGO and FGO accessories, right? Like really gives them some extra juice, some extra time to be like, oh yeah, you know, we've got the NA team in the house. They don't have anything else to worry about but NA. There's, there's NA boys who are just here to, 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 to cook, to brew. I come up with spicy things they can hit us that maybe appeal a little more to the audience. So for question number one, then. Yeah, let's see here. Fortunately, I'm trying to think. Hey, uh, another another tour, another con scene. Now that now that COVID is gone, wouldn't go amiss. That's just neat to see. It would be neat to see. Anything else though? Like, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I'm. I mean, I think the thing I want most is I just want more JP merchandising over here. Just in general. Yeah, I would just Mads, like to, art I, books. A, unfortunately, a lot like, of that, I think, has to come through Type Moon, because, like, yeah, I, I'd love to see, you know, Matt's books over here released a lot more, more art books. We still don't have, I think, the, 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 all the CE books they've done, the CE art books. No. I think there's up to, like, three total. Um, There's a lot of little merchant stuff, and obviously I understand some of that stuff is, like, unlikely to get shipped over here because it's, it's, like, bulky and heavy, but there's plenty of, like, paper craft and prints and stuff you could get over here. God knows if you could set up some print over demand over here. I think the the other thing I'd be interested in is just I don't know if it's reasonable at scale, but like you know, JP gets to to hit some 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 big stuff like some concert stages and stuff. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing some of that over here as well. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the just the, the 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 gist of it. Anyway, let's move on. This the next one comes from on that heck Teen Quest grind waiting for summer. Who says question? Howdy, lucky Omega. I know I'm dead for the next couple of summers because, dang, a lot of summers are up are uh, to my liking. So with that in mind, my question is: of all the new, uh, of all the new uh, JP summer servants revealed, which is your favorite? Everyone just pan to the thumbnail, pan yeah. back, look at your screen, look back to me. <laughs> <laughs> my answer, I believe, is fairly evident. But how about you, Omega? Uh, no, it's the same. It's Vargas. It's Vargas. I love Vargas. Um, I actually did ask someone for uh, her translations because they haven't been put in the wiki yet. And my favorite thing here is when she does her final ascension, she actually she doesn't say out loud, you know, it's mental things. But apparently we can hear that. But apparently she's been wearing her swimsuit under the entire time. and was just waiting for you to invite her to go swimming so she could show it up. And I'm just like, why are you so cute? It's that old gap moe. Again, yeah, no, all the designs are really good. Yeah. Like, you know, actually. uh you know, uh, s- s- Summer Castoria. Berserker Castor Artoria Summer. Uh, her NP being, you know, offensive and being, you know, the thing. That's the thing. that's a really good note as well. She said the line. Uh, let's see here. So, with that, let us move on. This next one comes from Crest... <laughs> sorry. Crest Aider dealing with not USPS, but starting a new job, quitting an old job, and exams. Oh my, in the proms tomorrow. Figure of speech. But in all seriousness, have a great weekend. Same to you. Have fun with dealing with not UPS. Uh, USPS. Excuse me. And our final one comes from Soul of the uh, Light Mode of Discord. The Cretan. They say, dear Lucky Lantern and Omega Alter Ego. I originally didn't have a question lined up, but after three days of stressing because iTunes didn't want to let me spend my own money, I have been fixated on the surprise USSR. So my question is thus. Did either of you roll? And if so, whomst did you get? Sending the good vibes. Wah, 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 wah. And then they have in parentheticals. <laughs> I'm not supposed to sure if that's supposed to be a Gil laugh or a Dante's laugh. Huh? I think that's how Dante's laugh is usually rendered. But it might be Gil. I think usually people usually want to go with the Gil laugh. But anyway, I think I said mine's already said. I am the only one who has rolled. And I got a Cleo, much to my disappointment. Yeah, there you go. You, you've, you've done, done, doggone, done, been answered, son. Dong ding dong ding dong dong ding. Plum doggone did it now, son. Sorry, we'll be there. All right, okay. That's mailbag. Yep, that's mailbag. Alrighty, taking us to about the 50-ish minute mark. That means it's time for Caldea Free Talk. Number one, the first one of Free Talk, which is very funny. Uh, so the Hololive integration continues. Obviously, uh, Lizada Pecora was the, you know, like brand ambassador for FGO's eighth anniversary in JP, but there's gonna be a uh, special FGO stream uh, f- from Hololive EN uh, about FGO, you know, USA. It's going to be hosted by uh, Ina and Crony. Uh, 
who, uh, you know, they're not the only ones, but should be remarked for being from Hololive EN and both having their character designs done by, you know, famous FGO artists. Uh, Ina's artist is, in case you couldn't fucking tell, you know, Abigail Hokusai, most of the foreigners. And uh, Kuni's artist is fucking Wada Arco. And Wada is very proud of her time child, if you've never seen Wada Arco on Twitter. But uh, as I speak, they are literally getting ready for this stream. Uh, you know, it's supposed to start at, at 10 p.m. Eastern. So we'll see what we'll have done come out of it. Uh, it's Obviously, it's going to be happening while we're still talking about stuff. So, uh, you know, I won't call that news. That's why it's in free talk. But, you know, we'll see what's up. Good to see that FGO NA is giving the, the go-ahead for all the, the you know, permissions and, and corporate relationships. Let's see. It's on Ina's channel. Uh, nah, they're just, I'm just double-checking the video descriptions. It's all full of, like, normal rigmarole. Uh, but it does have saying it's officially sponsored directly by FGO English and, you know, gives you the download link in the official site and shit. So it does... Uh, seem like we are going for, you know, some some promo crossover, maybe getting fired up with a with a new account for somebody or something like that, you know, cuz the 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 stream is titled Let's Learn About Fake Grind Order, so, you know, we'll we'll see we shall see what comes out of it. Uh yeah. but it does say uh spe- special day. So, uh th- this I believe is what you were alluding to earlier like we might get that uh pre-release campaign for summer announced a little sooner than people are reckoning. Yeah. Uh if it doesn't come out of this, I am like for sure it's going to be dropped uh the 21st and we might see it announced today and dropped later but all of our major stuff for uh the back to school ends the 21st of august so that's when we get the dead times <coughs> i've uh i've got the stream pulled up but muted on a different tab so i'll check in occasionally while we round out the show just to see if anything groundbreaking happens and i'm sure our patron chat will fucking explode i do believe they will explode yes if anything goes crazy but we're gonna be here for a little bit because it's time for further new summer deets and boy, Los Angeles trying to make me work overtime on these ones. Uh, it says a lot when uh, the one five star we're going to talk about, uh, Summer Mel- Melusine, aka Melusine Undyne, is like the simplest and most straightforward unit. Because there's a lot of other nonsense going on her. Now, we're going to begin by talking about Nocturia Foreigner. I want to note, the Foreigner classification seems to basically just be because she's an immigrant from the Lost Belt. Um, Probably. She has, th- like, three layers of hidden bond lines. Like, you can't access her bond three until you're all complete with the event. So, like, there's a lot of mystery still left here. But she doesn't have, like, the outside the domain passive or anything. So unless there's, like, you know, uh, a, a, whatchamacallit, a hidden costume or, uh, like, you know, an, an extra lore fact, it doesn't seem like she's plugged into any outer gods. It's just she's a foreigner because literally she's from a foreign timeline. That sort of thing. But, yeah, um, she's... Uh, Q, triple A, B, average hits, slightly low MP gain, uh, 0.4% is going to be a recurring number tonight, chat. She's got, uh, good HP and median attack for the slot. Her NP is very straightforward. It is an AoE arts, and it removes her own debuffs and heals herself based on overcharge. Also, I'm pretty sure it's an End of Evangelion reference. It sound- really looks like an F- There's There's a lot going on here. Also, she, you know, melts into chocolate a lot. The, the, the chocolate is apparently more thematic than we thought, but um, her kit is a little weird, so uh, I'm actually going to start by explaining to you her second skill. You will understand in a minute. So, this second skill uh, gives the party 10-20% to 20% NP damage up for three turns, and it gives everybody except herself a little special debuff called, you know, My Soldier or My Brave Soldier, My Fair Soldiers. Uh, this is a debuff that lasts for three turns, and it's basically a skill seal. But also, when she activates the second skill, it gives a conditional buff on those allies. If they have the My Soldier skill seal, they will get 30 to 50% attack up and 20 to 30% defense up for three turns. Now, this special skill seal is a debuff, so it can be blocked with immunity or resistance. But if you do that, you do not get the buffs. It is not a, like, normal demerit chain. It is, unless you have this special skill seal, you do not get the attack and defense up. But it is, a, you know, at the very least, a, a fairly normal NP up if you don't want to worry about that. So to roll it back then, her first skill then gives herself one time three turns debuff immune. Uh, it gives her 500 to 1k HP per turn and 10 to 20% NP per turn for three turns. That's right. She has 20% NP per turn for three turns. Really, that's that's why I think her NP gain is already low. And also, uh, 
if you have allies who have her special soldier skill seal debuff, they get 20 to 30% battery. Because remember, it's skill seal, not NP seal. You can still NP, you just can't activate skills. Her final skill is gives herself a 10 to 20% arts up for three turns, hits all enemies with a 40 to 60% stun chance, and reduces their defense by 10 to 20% for three turns. But will seal the arts cards of everybody but herself and Artoria caster allies for one turn. Oh, my friend. Yes. But also in the most Nocturia slash Mave way possible. Are you my one friend? No? Fuck you. Uh, also, by the way, obviously, uh, Artoria caster allies. It's like um, uh, Oberon's uh, Merlin exclusive debuff. It targets regular Castoria and Summer Castoria. Dirt. Uh, I don't believe we've got any secret extra uh, Castoria allies that are included in this trait, but yeah. So, it's a weird kit. Uh, her passives are she has uh, Magic Resistance A. Uh, while she's on the field, she gives your uh, entire party uh, 20% Stargen. So, you know, just, just a little bit of a, uh, you know... It's a, it's, a, it's interesting, you know, having, having multi-target passives, as it were. And I don't believe... Yeah, no, it's just just everybody. It's not related there. Uh, this one's called Melty Heart, by the way. And then her final passive skill is called Southern Star EX. She gets four stars per turn and 4% NP per turn. So yeah, uh, regular NP gain on hit is a lie. Uh, this girl will just do AoE stuff constantly. So yeah, um, Nock is fucking weird, y'all. For a welfare especially, weird. She has support potential, but... You're going to be putting a lot of faith in the attack up you get and the basic NP damage up she does, since you're not going to get those servants' own skills for those steroids. If you remove the debuff, remember, you lose the attack buff, so, you know, you can't benefit from it. So, her kit really helps out servants who do a fuck ton on their own NP proc. It's not a buff block, so you can still fire NPs, and you still get your NP-related buffs, and you get CE buffs, obviously, but you can't use your own skills. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, in general, I think she has a lot of potential for, like, low-level mat farming, like certain free quests where you get class matchup, or high-level farming, but only if you are using servants that have a lot of inherent buffs on NP and probably have high NP levels. So works best with, you know, uh, whaling or other welfares, I think. But there's a lot of potential for some big damage there in supports, and just in general, if you just, you know, the, the skill seal only matters... At, if they haven't fired their skills yet. So if you just want to go all in on, like, double Castoria knock and just have her loop once you've fired all the buffs, um, yeah, no, she gives herself fucking, you know, she's included in that 20% MP damage up. Uh, she can give herself, you know, 20% arts up. And God, she has so much, so much passive generation. Like I said, 20% NP per turn, you know, for three turns on that one skill. Great health regen. Star generation as well. It's 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 spicy. Um, a lot of people are breaking their brains to try and figure out some kind of new, you know, Nocturia system farming. It's not perfect yet because, again, she does do that skill seal debuff. But there's something there. And yes, this means there is a second four star that people are trying to craft a whole new meta out of already. But let's get to the gritty. That second banner of servants, technically the third, but you know what I mean. The second banner of new servants. We're gonna start with UDK Union Defense Knights Bargest, who is an archer. She comes in uh, Camp Counselor, Gun Maid, and Mecha Musume forms. For her class, she is uh, low attack, high HP, once again, as you would expect, but does not conform to what you would expect for, uh, you know, Bargast uh, cards. She's actually quick, quick, arts, arts, buster. Normal hit counts and slightly lowered NP gain again. I think she's like 0.42 or 0.41 again. But yeah, she does have an archer-styled deck now. So her NP is an AoE arts, asterisk, it improves her arts first based on <laughs> overcharge. It strips the enemy of all their off evidence of buffs when you fire it, but it does have a demerit to cure them of burn slash spreading fire, because in case you forgot, Summer Bargast is a fucking firefighter. Uh, her NP is literally now named uh, Water Save Galatine. It's pretty neat. It's a giant water gun. Also, uh, one of her attack animations involves a fire truck coming in from off screen. It has been confirmed in the event. Canonically, you, Master, are driving the truck. Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's referenced in one of her NP lines, actually. Because yeah. her NP is, uh, pretty fucking sick. Oh, I forgot to put the fucking NP sprite in there. No! Oh, well. I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't know where there was room for it in the current composition of the thumbnail. I would have done it. 
you would have figured it out. It's sure, but I know what I'm about. You, you've used you've used a lot with what we got going on, but yeah. So uh, already got a got a pretty solid line there. So her first skill gives herself twenty to thirty percent attack up and thirty to fifty percent crit up for three turns. It also pro- applies a special protect the weak buff on herself for three turns. Uh, first of all, every time she executes a normal attack, the entire party feels five heals five hundred HP. And if there is a three star or lower servant on the field, she gets a further twenty percent attack up and ten stars per turn. Nice. Her second skill is pretty phenomenal. Uh, this one's called you know uh, Queen's Guard. Uh, or something to that effect. Don't know the, how that exactly we translate it, but it gives herself twenty to thirty percent battery. Gives the entire team one turn of invul. Gives the entire uh, gives the other party members, not herself, but gives the other party a two k to three k heal and minus one turn cooldown on skills. Obviously, again, not for herself, but for everybody else. Um, still gnarly. Uh, also, I think it's only got like a six turn cooldown max. Like it's not that crazy. Her final skill then uh, gives herself twenty to thirty percent NP damage up. And the super large trait for three turns. And much like Space Ishtar, you get an option. You can convert her NP to single target for three turns. Uh, so yes, she is normally AoE arts, but she can be single target arts at her third ascension if you so choose. Uh, you are locked into this for three turns, uh, and uh, her NP is literally the same. It just switches to the single target damage multiplier numbers. Mm-hmm. So you, you hit them with the appropriate amount of damage. But yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Um... Honestly, uh, this is kind of how I wish Melusine worked, uh, because I you know, wanted to mention that I yeah. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure it was like only a couple days. No, it was like a couple days before the uh, man. You were complaining about how we had our uh, single target to AOE, but not our in- AOE to single target, and I was just all like, yeah. you know, this is just Will Smith pointing at Vargas, you know, just ta da. Yeah. Um, and and the the thing about this is it's a you know an optional buff you can choose to apply that sticks for several turns, whereas uh. You know, uh, Melusine literally switches ascensions and cannot switch back, so she's locked in once you do the floppy. So, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, so her passives, she still has magic resistance C. She has uh, madness enhancement C as well, so her one buster card still claps. She has a special uh, buff, uh, passive buff, which is translated as fairy knight in the text. I'm pretty sure that means they're going to get a Tam Lin passive buff in, in English. Uh, but it basically gives her 4% critical damage versus human attribute enemies. Just all the time. Also, uh, if you're on a battlefield that has the burning status, she gains 5% NP per turn and is immune to burn and spreading fire. Uh, only when she shows up to a fire, but yeah. Uh, Vargas continues to be pretty OP. She has great buffs, seriously. She has a fucking, like I said, like a 6 turn cooldown on her like 30% battery, minus 1 cooldown for the rest of the team, and a 3k heal, and a party wide invul on a 4 star. It's cracked. It's crazy. We're just handing out sc- cool- cooldown reductions. Um, she has, so she has great buffs, she can be AoE or ST for, like, you know, if you get, like, a weird, uh, I don't know, I wrote in my notes 311, but hypothetically, a 211 node, or something like that, she can do all the heavy lifting and has some great team synergy. Like, all you need to do is do the, the AoE first and then switch to ST. Uh, she's arts, you know, so it works out great, she's got potential for batteries and recovery. She's got great crit follow-up as well, which means she synergizes perfectly well with, uh, Lady Avalon, who obviously is a bonus servant right now, because she is a quote-unquote, summer servant. So yeah, no, uh, pretty cool. Uh, speaking, though, of weirdness, uh, Summer Babo's pretty weird. Or Kate Ku, Karpistus, if you prefer. She's an SR pretender. She's roughly on par with Hephaestion in terms of stats, you know, just like uh, literally uh, two digits off in a couple of places. She's QAA Bubba, kind of swapping around her, her, her own deck stuff. Average hit counts once again, slightly above average NP gain. So yeah, her NP gain is actually uh, 0.6 something. And uh, her NP is pretty crazy. So, first, it gives herself three turns of healing per turn, 10% NP per turn, and 10 stars per turn. So she heals, gets stars, and gets NP per turn. First, when you fire the NP. Also, based on overcharge, it gives her one turn of buster up per turn, because it's a AoE buster, which hits all enemies with uh, 2k uh, of curse and poison for three turns, and... One turn of 50% attack down. All enemies. Fuck you. Half your attack. Also, your Christian poison. Die. And it deals bonus damage to human attribute enemies. That's right. This motherfucker has a trait damage in here. So yeah, no. Uh, pretty baller. Her first skill is a kind of charisma. It is a 10 to 20% attack up and defense up for three turns. And also gives the party uh, three extra turns on NP, HP, and star regeneration d- buffs. And it gives enemies... 
three extra turns on all their dot bu- debuffs. So that's Poison, Burn, and Curse. So yeah, no, that's her first skill. Pretty crazy. Uh, her second skill just puts one enemy on blast, uh, strips their buffs. Yes, that's a targetable buff strip. Gives a 20 to 30 percent debuff res down for three turns, a 20 to 30 percent crit chance down for three turns, and reduces their NP by one tick per turn for two turns. Cannot be stacked. You thought uh, just regular charge down was good? No, no. She's gonna hit him with the charge down two turns in a row. So that's a a, a pretty heavy slammer. Also, it's a 20 to 30 percent battery for herself. That second skill as well. So you know we're we're still battering. Uh. So, uh, her final skill is a team-wide 10 to 20% MP damage up, and, uh, does a group, you know, 5 to 15 stars. Also, uh, it gives allies, if they have a buff from one of her special passives, we'll talk about later, she has a unique passive, um, it'll give those party members 20% battery and a further 10 to 20% MP damage. So, just stacks on stacks on stacks on stacks. Uh, her passives are slightly different per ascension. Uh, hey, in case you guys didn't figure it out, her first ascension, which is the the Karanos hoodie one, um, that's where she's, you know, uh, pretending to be the priestess. Uh, and then later she switches back to being more, you know, fairy more Tamlin-y. So, uh, she always has Magic Resistance EX still, and Riding EX. She has Territory Creation D, so her couple of arts cards clap pretty good. Um, she has that same Tamlin crit I mentioned before that, uh, that, uh, the Tamlin passive that, uh, Bargus has. Uh, so, in her first ascension, it's E rank, so she only gets, like, 4% crit up. Um, if you use it in her second or third ascensions, she has uh, Tamlin rank A, so she gets 20% extra crit damage versus human attribute enemies all the time. Uh, and her final passive gives allies um, who are chaotic or good slightly increased NP gen. These are separate traits, so if you're chaotic good, you get both. And also, no matter what ascension she is in, um, if she is on the field, she procs when she appears a special unattacked buff. So all of your allies get a timed buff if they get hit with an attack. They will get 10% increased crit damage for one turn, and also that procs her third uh, effect skills. So yeah, there's another thing that's pretty unique. She, When she appears on the field, she has a built-in on-hit buff um, called, by the way, uh, you know, the Wrath of the, of the God, which just gives you 10% crit for one turn when you're hit. You know, slam him. Get him. Uh, very solid kit. Like I said before, all kinds of weird stuff you can do with this, with making dots last longer, with making, you know, regenerating effects uh, also last longer. Um, really good for stally grind fights, you know? She's got that double charge down. She can extend your regeneration, obviously, and also uh, has revenge as an effect literally built in as a passive. Very, very interesting kit. Uh, somebody asked a question about Bargus if she uh, cleanses burns she gets. No, I do not believe so. Um, so if you want to like make yourself immune to certain burn effects, you gotta uh, make sure to fire it off, fire off your terrain changer early if you want to do that. But yeah, so uh, Summer Babo, very interesting. Got some things going on. Also, she is apparently significantly incognito. I I do believe that uh, at least in her lines that we've seen translated, uh, Bargus does not recognize her. She's like, there's no way Tamlin Tristan didn't come to Morgan's Resort in the Southern Country, but I haven't seen her. Where the fuck is she? Meanwhile, by the way, Master, have you noticed a? I've I've noticed a weird fairy in the woods wearing a a, a pelt. Yeah, I don't know. She's having fun, I guess. Uh, her second ascension, by the way, is uh uh her uh cosplaying as uh as uh you know Balbon of the uh the Rain Clan. Uh, obviously a previous incarnation that must have worked with Ash. So that's why you see her reading books in the CM. And then she does actually have a you know a swimsuit in the third one. And now we shall go to the SSR. Oh, sorry, I tabbed over to the stream. It looks like they're talking about designs now. Uh, Ina and Crony have pulled up Melt. But, alright, uh, Summer Melusine, a.k.a. Melusine Undyne, as I said before, has finally completed her dream of becoming a jet plane. Uh, no, seriously, she has a, a, a fucking jetpack, actually. That's her thing. Um, you know, she, she's here for holiday. She is on vacation. So, uh, being a ruler... She is tied with Sherlock for the highest attack of all rulers. That's right. We have not beat this record since Sherlock. Melusine merely ties. Uh, and she has just a smidge less HP than him. She's QAABB again with average hit counts, you know, like threes all around, though I believe her quick is five. Uh, and again, the slightly below average NP gain. She also has like 0.42% NP gain per hit. Very strong effect here. Uh, and compared to most of the rest of these people we've run into tonight, her NP is very simple. She gives herself a 30% crit up for three turns buff. She generates uh, one turn of 
I think it's one turn. I'll double check. But she generates a 20 to 40 percent attack up on herself first based on overcharge. No, it is three turns. Okay, so uh, that's pretty spicy. She can give herself a 20 percent attack up every time she fires her NP. Her NP uh, then itself is actually AoE arts with bonus damage versus Earth Servants. Uh, you know, she is just, uh, you know, damage ramp. The Servant, still. DPS ramp. So yeah, you get a trait damage, you get an AoE. She does extra crit damage and extra attack for three turns. So, uh, her first skill gives herself 20-30% uh, increases of arts, crit damage, and gives her a bonus damage versus chaotic enemies for three turns. Also, uh, she gives all other members of the party, explicitly not herself, but all mem other members of the party, 500 to 1k damage cut for three turns. Just flat, 1k damage cut for three turns to everybody but her. And she's a ruler, so she doesn't need help tanking. Her second skill gives her three turns of star absorb increase by a lot. And rulers already get good star absorb. Um, and also, uh, she does five to ten stars per turn for three turns and ten stars flat. But if you are on air or sea, uh, specifically water side or a new airspace terrain trait, she gets a further ten to twenty stars per turn and twenty stars flat. I think those are additive, not replacing. So you always get those effects no matter what, and then you get a fuck ton if you're on a special terrain, which is saying something, especially because obviously being new, uh, there's no servant that just creates airspace, uh, though obviously you can create water side if you want to. Uh, and her final skill is just, you know, all the good parts of her uh, previous third skill. It's still a 50 to 80% battery. Uh, this means that if you unlock that app end skill, mana loading, she straight up is a K-scope. Fuck you. 20 to 30% NP damage up for three turns. And gives herself two times three turns invul. Uh, her passives are just magic resistance B, writing A+, plus, and that Tamlin C for human crit up damage. For a summer unit, she is remarkably straightforward. All of her stuff just is just do arts, ramp crits, ramp ramp arts, NP loop, do more, do more, do more, do more. Very straightforward, but she obviously has her normal forms, uh, you know, crazy burst potential. Literally designed to blow up waves and then just do arts face cards on the following turns. Uh... You know, we're having fun out here. That's just, it, it's its just that easy, chat. Uh, yeah, I'm, I was actually quite surprised that her attack up on NP was uh, was three turns. But yeah, no, that's pretty good. Very spiced. Uh, let me double check what that is at uh, double overcharge level. 30% attack up for three turns. Yeah, so if you give her the extra overcharge levels or you have a servant proc that overcharges, even if you don't have a multiple NP level, very good. Good stuff. Spicy. Spicy meatball. And she's got two trade damages there. I think there's a lot of overlap in, in Chaotix and stuff. Um, also, um, I'm going to go out on a limb, but I'm pretty sure that, like, 90% of the the Moon Cancers you're going to run into are going to be Chaotic Evil. Unless, is BB lying in one of her forms? Is her, like, regular welfare form, like, Chaotic Good or something stupid? I think it is Chaotic Good, actually. Well, it's still Chaotic, so. Uh, Melusine, uh, Melusine is designed to punch BB with that extra extra spicy chaos damage. 30% damage up versus chaotic for three turns. Uh, and obviously, we all know Kiara is chaotic evil. Don't don't, yes. don't at me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, having fun. So yeah, like I said, even though she is arguably the most straightforward summer I think we've got so far, because, um, you know, like, even, uh, you know, Summer Castoria, who some people are trying to call Bastoria, and I'm just like, no. What? <laughs> Why would you say that about my friend, my dear and close personal friend, the Avalon Lefay? Um, even she still has access to, like, her anti-enforcement defense and some other, you know, uh, funny things. So, yeah. Uh, also, uh, you know, talking about her jet transition, uh, we don't often talk about the background work, but, you know, First Ascension, Summer Melusine looks like she's on the cover of, you know, a new Ace Combat game. Yeah. Uh, and she is with, uh, I believe somebody tracked it down, it's the, uh, SR-91, or 71, um, a prototype before the Blackbird in, like, high-speed stealth jets. So, like, yeah. Oh, uh, she's having fun. Done. And also, shout out to, to Chaco for drawing all that. Um, also, honestly, I'm looking at her third ascension. This also kind of looks like an Ace Combat cover. There's, you know, the... the Is that actually supposed to be the underside of the storm border? It might be. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, there's there's air trails, and obviously her, her third form is when she's, you know, full dragon pack mecha. She's got her fucking six shades. She's ready to rock. See, I know. Summer. They're good. They're good. Good servants. Oh, is she lawful evil? Phoebe's lawful evil? No, uh, Summer Kiara is lawful evil. Weird. Oh, Summer Kiara, I can believe, yeah. Let me double check that's in all ascensions, though, because Summer Kiara is one of those servants that has 
the trait weirdness. I would I won't be surprised if Kiara Cop is uh is lawful evil. That makes a scary amount of sense. Scarily. Alright. Look at Kiara. Let me double check her fact sheet here. No, weird. It is lawful evil all the way down. Wild. It's just that um when she gets to stage three, she becomes a uh uh a demonic beast and a uh animal trait servant. Blam. Weird. No, that's how it'd be. Weird. Yeah. No, actually, I should double check. Does she fall under the Earth type? Because she's, you know, pretending to be somebody. Yeah, she is attribute Earth. So you do get the you do get the NP bonus damage uh, on Summer Kiara. Uh, n- not that I'm expecting we will have to fight archetype Earth anytime soon, but she is chaotic good in her first and, and third stage. She's neutral good in her second stage. Summer BB is chaotic evil because she's plugged into the Nyarlathotep. Duh. Regular BB is chaotic good. Genicar, are you lawful good? You should be. You're you're Ganesha. Yes. Yes. I mean, I I I I do not think Melusine would have any beef with with Ginako. That does make me wonder, though, because I, I I know that there's some some commentary that we we wrangled BB for this situation. Is I wonder if that canonically means that it was Melusine that wrangled her. A lot of people joked about Morgan literally sending Melusine after BB to make sure shit didn't get fucking weird this time. Um, spoilers, shit still got fucking weird this time. Obviously, shit got weird. Uh, <laughs> Morgan o- and Oberon are involved. And it's still Lulu. Oh, but no, yeah, no, now I'm just, I'm just imagining my old fucking, you know, Call of Duty memes. You know, just like, just, Morgan gets the kill streak, airstrike incoming, predator missile inbound. And it's just, you know, then you play, uh, if, if I was good at video editing and I had, like, accessible footage of old Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, I would, I would do the, you know, I I in my mind I'm imagining the meme. The meme is like you make it look like like uh a Morgan like VTuber rig. She gets the fucking you know the Predator missile care package, and then you play Melusine's NP animation. There you go. Somebody who's better on the internet can get in there. Also, yes, that is actually um because her uh, uh Melusine's profile has been fully translated and actually uh put up on the wiki. Um. Oh, it has. Yeah. Much. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, her thing is absolutely like basically. If y'all thought Melusine had restraint before, because yes, T- Tamlin Lancelot, regular Melusine, does have restraint. Um, she is kind of, you know, reserved most of the time. Um, uh, Summer Melusine is, she's one of those summers, y'all. She's just like, uh, oh, it's vacation? Unleash. I can do whatever the fuck I want? Cool. I'm gonna wear a jetpack and sit on the beach. Vargas still dislikes this. <laughs> yes, Bar- Vargas is like, Vargas' B- line is like calling up Melusine of like, what is she doing just lounging on the beach? I guess she's supposed to be looking out for threats to Queen Morgan, but... I do find it interesting how apparently the Tamlin do still serve um, Morgan. I find it fascinating. Well, yeah, I hope this is something... I hope this, I hope it's something that um, gets um, talked about in summer. Because I really am just hoping like, this is just the fucking LB6 aftercare story. It does kind of seem that way. Along with many, many fun Oberon expressions. Oberon... Oberon's artist also not obviously not doing like a full full summer treatment, you know, but you know did give him two costumes and uh, lots of love um, uh, applied in those fucking facial sprites. His literal bug eyed look. <sighs> but yeah, those are you. Those are your the toto of your new servants. Just put this part in last week's episode together. Uh, it's like it's a good summer. It's a fucking weird summer, but it looks good. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, we got a lot of funny things hitting. Obviously, you can make your jokes, you know, about Nazi's obsession with writing stories that have giant women in them because there's there are indeed several of them. Okay with this, although, like, thank you, Nazi. This is exactly what I wanted. L- liter- literally, uh, Nocturia's NP is, you know, she melts into chocolate and then giant, I assume Queen Mab, but like rises out of the ground and then Nocturia flies out of her heart. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's a uh, it's a reference to that because you know her name. Yes, and also uh, her first skill is co- still called Queen's Tomb. But yeah, lots of explosivo stuff going on. But yes, that is that, and that's most of the way through our show for today. Let's hit you with a little check-in on where the Patron polls are going. Do need to sit and slam a jam a few new fancy on Friday. But, oh, we've, we've cycled back around, uh, and now uh, poll ended a couple days ago, and it looks like uh, your winner this month will be uh, Archer Nasuno, Nasuno Yoichi. Let's go! From Legente. Alrighty. Okay. Yes, the, the missiles have swimsuits in, in Melisi. It's very funny. But yeah, that looks like that's going to wrap up our episode of Let's Look FGO for this week. Keep alive. Keep on looking out for that, you know, 
new summer. We're going to have a lot of fun time with, uh, I believe this one's nominal title. Uh, they haven't actually, I don't think they said it out loud yet in English, so it could change a little, but it's uh, called A Summer Adventure. We're going to have a fun time digging for treasure. Yeah. So look forward to that and the pregame on that. Obviously, if there's like a, you know, the, the summer events still technically ongoing until, you know, the the 1st of uh, September in JP. So I guess keep your eye out for the double secret fifth banner. <laughs> it's possible. They had, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, and like I said, there there could be yet another hidden costume waiting in the story prog. We'll see. So we'll be able to keep you up with all that news and whatever else is jamming on there. And uh, we'll hope you have a fun time. If you want to see some more out of us, make sure to stay tuned for What's Up, your weekly What's Up. That's live streamed on Saturdays uh, after we post this live to public on YouTube. So check that out. Uh, mentioned earlier, but Lucky did beat Final Fantasy 16, so we'll probably be spending a lot of time talking about that one. Yeah. So keep your ears up for that. And uh, pay out for future streams. And also, you know, uh, if, if you like that little snippet of 14 Talk, you can see where we're at with that, because I also stream that every week on Wednesday. You can check out our previous one. I unlocked my uh, Sentai Ranger suit in the last stream, among other things. But that is it from us, unless we've got any last-minute additions. I almost said that with more of an E sound for additions. Hey. Right. But I think that's going to be it. Nothing else for me. Bye-bye. Okay. Took a little yawny there. So, that means it's time for the outro. Hey, if you're watching the video on YouTube, be sure to give us a like. You can also leave your comments down below in the comment section, or join our Discord. Link is in the video's description and the channel page. We have plenty of fun, cool Discord channels, uh, including a separate JP channel and a separate, separate JP spoiler thread. I do enjoy it. It lets me hang out with the JP people without actually getting spoiled with anything. Yeah, it seems to be working uh, so far. It's a good, it was a good division. And, you know, we've got uh, lots of other channels about stuff. Like, I don't know if you want to yell about the fact that Nikkei's going to do uh, a near collab. I'm yelling about it. You don't have to yell about it. I will yell about it. Don't worry. You can also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Feel our videos. And even if you're already subscribed, you can ring that bell so you always know we post a new video or when we stream. You can also join our channel memberships for access to membership badges and emotes. Click the join button or the link in the description. And like I said at the front of the show, you can consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to this episode in audio format early for as little as a dollar a month or approximately $10 a year with an annual membership. At higher levels, you get access to topic polls like that fan server Friday I just outlined. Among other things, can get certain videos early. Sorry, I just had an existential flash of dread. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to have to make two giant summer wanted soon. At least I don't have to do more research for that. I just have to build graphics. Build graphics. graph! But yeah, Look so... at this graph! Yep. Look at this graphics package. But yes, those uh, those go up early on Patreon as well, so that's a, another incentive. Uh, and with all that, we're going to get out of your hair for Let's Look Up you this week. We'll see you next time. Have a good evening, everyone.